Unabhängigkeitsbewegung beschlossen, die seit einem Jahr andauernden Kämpfe einzustellen. Das Abkommen sieht vor, dass Georgien seine Truppen aus der Konfliktregion zurückziehen muss. Die georgische Führung betonte aber, dass Abchasien auch weiterhin voll und ganz zu Georgien gehöre. Im Krieg um die nach Unabhängigkeit strebende Georgische Republik Abchasien sind etwa 3000 Menschen ums Leben gekommen. Als Vermittler hatte sich der russische Außenminister Kosirev eingeschaltet. The Georgian President Edward Shevardnadze announced that a peace plan for Abkhazia would be signed shortly. In August 1992, Georgia sent troops to Abkhazia to prevent its secession. Georgian sources say more than 3,000 people have been killed in fighting against the rebels who control much of the region. Opponents of President Boris Yeltsin's... A fragile ceasefire agreed three weeks ago in the former Soviet Republic of Georgia is now in danger following an attack by government troops on three rebel villages late last night. Law and order across the country has broken down after a year of fighting between Georgian forces and guerrillas in breakaway Abkhazia. The battle for the capital Sukhumi has left the city without electricity, fuel or water. So far the war has claimed more than 4,000 lives. The political survival of Georgia's president Edward Shevardnadze could now depend on his ability to maintain the peace agreement. Paul Simpson reports from Georgia on a conflict which threatens the country's hopes of a democratic future. Georgian soldiers heading to the breakaway Republic of Abkhazia. There, a shaky ceasefire is holding after a year of civil war. But neither the Georgians nor the Abkhazians are taking any chances, and both are keeping their armies up to strength. These men were dispatched to the only remaining Georgian stronghold in Abkhazia, the regional capital, Sukhumi. Sukhumi has been under siege for nearly a year now, surrounded by Abkhazian artillery high up in the mountains. Tank traps and sandbags have been thrown up around town. Much of Sukhumi lies deserted. Three quarters of the civilian population has fled. And now only gunmen roam the ruins. Law and order has collapsed and large sections of Sukhumi are controlled by armed gangs. We heard accounts of appalling atrocities committed by what the local people described as bandits. Accounts of looting, murder and rape. Even the local army commander needs a special bodyguard when traveling around town. That is no I've had to issue an emergency decree to restore order, he said. After a year of heavy shelling, few buildings have been left intact. There's been no water or electricity here for 10 months. Drinking water is collected from seven kilometers away by the few residents who remain, and they plunder the city's parks for firewood. Along the front line, some people still live in the shells of their houses. This woman's home has been hit several times by mortar fire. She's chosen to stay here to guard her few possessions from the gunmen. Many in the Georgian army oppose the ceasefire. They want to fight on to recapture lost lands, and their anger is directed at the Georgian leader, Edward Shevardnadze. The greatest threat to the truce comes from the irregular forces. They are so unpredictable that even Georgian soldiers are wary when approaching them. Drawn from the local population, they act independently, ignoring commands from the Georgian army. For them, the ceasefire appears to be merely a chance to keep a watchful eye on the Abkhazian forces only 30 meters away across this dried up riverbed. This is the front line of the battle for Sukhumi, and it's here that the ceasefire is being most frequently broken. If a lasting truce is to be imposed here, then Edward Shevardnadze will have to regain full control of these frontline troops. So great is their threat to peace here that Mr. Shevardnadze is planning to use force to disarm them. Georgia 
Those armed units are a threat to Mr. Shevardnadze's position, but there are threats closer to home, on the streets of the capital Tbilisi, from restless soldiers returning fully armed from the Abkhazian battlefields. Barely an hour goes by without the sound of gunfire across town. Roadblocks have been set up to confiscate guns from the soldiers, and already the number of weapons in Tbilisi has reached lethal proportions. This week, a grenade exploded in a food market near Tbilisi. Four people were killed, dozens more wounded, and still, no one knows exactly how it happened. All this is pushing Mr. Shevardnadze into imposing what he calls a special regime. Mr. Shevardnadze may yet be forced to take even harsher measures to safeguard his rule. In the Georgian parliament, there is no shortage of politicians prepared to harness the anger of returning soldiers and mount a challenge to the government. They share the military's view that the ceasefire is a betrayal. Their battle cry is that Georgia should fight on to reclaim the lands lost in the war. A small advance party of United Nations observers has arrived in Abkhazia. They are preparing for the arrival of a full UN monitoring force. Already they are doubtful the ceasefire arrangements can be fulfilled. It uh, concerns or revolves around the withdrawal of artillery, and, uh, heavy equipment, and also forces. So they have a plan, but if they will be able to follow that, that plan the sides, I doubt it. The ceasefire has already been broken many times, and the wounded continue to arrive from the front lines. The war in Abkhazia has almost bankrupted the Georgian economy. Peace here will give Georgia another chance to find political stability. But at present, there seems little chance of that. The men intent on sabotaging the ceasefire will not easily surrender their weapons. Paul Simpson, Channel 4 News, Sukumi. Tonight's main news again, the Bosnian... Abazya Parlamentosu, Gürcü Kuvvetlerinin Abazya'nın Nizne Eşeri bölgesine topçu ateşi açtığını ileri sürerken, Gürcistan Savunma Bakanlığı da Abazaların Sukumi'yi top ateşine tuttuğunu iddia etti. Siyasi gözlemciler son gelişmelerin 11 aydır devam eden çatışmaları sona erdirmek için dün Rusya'nın aracılığıyla imzalanan ateşkes anlaşmasının uzun süreli olamayacağı endişesini gündeme getirdiğini belirtiyorlar. Rusya'nın güneyindeki Soçi kentinde imzalanan ateşkes anlaşması Gürcü ve Abaza kuvvetlerinin bölgeden çekilmesini ve Birleşmiş Milletler gözlemcileri gönderilmesini öngörüyor.